I am every woman, and this is every woman with me, Empress Golding, right here on Nationwide 90 FM. It's a relationship Tuesday, and we want healthy relationships for a healthier world. Yeah, but I've been talking to some friends. I have a lot of friends who are over 50, and when we go and have lunch, they say some things, and it freaks me out. <laughs> They're like having hot flushes, talking about all kinds of things happening down there. And I am like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get there. And many women are there now. And some of us just need a nice, healthy space to have the conversation. This is every woman and we welcome every man tuning in. Because when we say relationships, we're here talking about the man and the woman. And the focus today is menopause, relationships, and sexuality. Now, menopause, <laughs> I want won't even tell you what menopause is if you don't know and you're like 18 and you haven't been talking about it nobody told you about it then today is the day and if you are a woman to all my women all across the world listening right now I have Dr. Verna Brooks McKenzie with me today to help us understand menopause navigate the flushes and make it healthier for our relationships right we want to be able to manage this menopause while in a relationship and just for ourselves yeah happier women happier world <laughs> so let's get happier with menopause today feel free to call at any time 876-630-9371 to 4 or 876-618-8255 whatsappers i'm gonna log on youtubers i'm logging on you can ask your questions there as well hello dr verna and welcome to every woman and thank you for being here well, thank you so much for inviting me to speak on a topic that is near and dear to my heart, menopause. Yes, you are a certified menopause expert, founder and CEO of AskDrVerna.com and a health consultant. Let's start with you, you powerful woman. Tell me all about you, a Jamaican in New York. <laughs> well, there's so much to say, but in a nutshell... I'm an obstetrician and gynecologist by profession, and when I was in Jamaica, I wanted to find a way to manage women in a holistic manage women's health in a holistic way, and not just treating the gynecological problems that women tend to have. Mm. So, through Mrs. Hermit Metcalf, when at Wyatt, she sent me to a menopause conference in the United States. And I said, a menopause conference? I did not know that they had such a thing. And when I went to the conference, it was like my eureka moment. But I saw a conference full of men. Mm -hmm. There were people from all over the world. And I said, where are the women? These men are talking about menopause and everything. But now we have more women that are taking charge and running the conferences. And I opened the first menopause center in Jamaica, the menopause center of Jamaica, where women came to see me to take them through the process into the change of life from their reproductive years into their final years until we go off into the sunset. And uh, I wanted to do that because I saw how women were suffering in silence and their quality of life was just not good. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, there has to be a better way. We have to show women that at this time of our lives, we should embrace the changes and we should reinvent ourselves because that's what I did when I relocated to the United States so that we can lead healthier, happier, and more active lifestyle. And it's just a holistic approach to women's health. Firstly, I want to say congratulations on behalf of the entire team. Thank you again. Because one of the things that I did, I noticed it mentioned Ask Dr. Berna, because my patients in Jamaica and people were asking me, Dr. Brooks, can't you come back to Jamaica and even work out of a doctor's office so that we can, you can still continue to manage us? I said, well, this is the 21st century. I don't have to just line up and down the place. So I did a course in entrepreneurship, and then I met this IT consultant who, between the both of us, I designed, I said, I'm going to launch my menopause center in cyberspace. So I launched AskDrWarner.com, and it's a blog as well where I write articles, and I also teach women 
how to stay healthy in terms of their nutritional needs. And uh, people consult with me from all over the world. Well so, done. And I even have people as young as in their 20s who they say, you know, we are not there yet, but we want to get the information so that we know how to prepare. And now the FDA has actually approved a kit for predicting menopause within a five-year period, and I can talk about that. Excellent work. And I'm on your website now, Dr. Verno, and I am looking, and my producer and I, we're not there yet, but we're doing this for us. We're being a little selfish. <laughs> <laughs> but really and truly, there are millions of women all across the world who want some advice. So let's start with menopause. When does it happen? What happens to our body? What should we be looking out for and preparing our bodies for? Explain that to me, please. The beginning. How does it okay. all happen? What, what's going on with my body? So basically, it's answering the question, what is menopause? Menopause is the final menstrual period, but it doesn't stop there. You have to stop menstruating for 12 consecutive months. Operative word is consecutive, because while we are going through that process, what we call the change of life, when we are still menstruating, the period can stop and start and stop and start until it finally stops. So some women, it may stop for six months and then it comes back because the estrogen left our ovaries produce this hormone called estrogen, which is our female hormone that gives us our beautiful skin and let us have breasts and all that sort of thing. And when the estrogen levels decline in the ovaries, then that estrogen is responsible for lining the womb, the inside of the womb. Mm. And then another hormone is produced when we shed an egg, which is called ovulation, that causes the lining to get nice and thick because our bodies are always preparing us for to have a baby. So in case that does not happen, there's no sperm to fertilize the egg, then that lining is shed and that is called menstruation. So in about five to seven years approaching menopause, the estrogen levels decline and then the levels will rise up again. And then it's the rise and fall in the estrogen levels that can trigger off symptoms that the most common one that people know about is the hot flashes. And I must say that menopause starts between, anywhere between the ages of 45 to 55 years with an average age of 51, and that's natural menopause. But there are some people who may start stop menstruating earlier, between 40 to 45, and that is called early menopause. Some women may have had their ovaries removed surgically at the time when they had a hysterectomy done or the removal of the womb for fibroids and all sorts of things. And that is called induced menopause. And there are some women who might have had cancer treatment that damaged and the radiation or damaged the ovaries, and that's also called induced menopause. And the premature menopause is some women stop menstruating before age 40. And that is called premature, premature menopause. There are some women who stop menstruating but it's not menopause because they don't produce enough estrogen in the ovaries, and that's called primary ovarian insufficiency. And then those women may start to menstruate again. I can't talk about menopause without um, talking about Professor Wolf Lupian, who started the first menopause research center in Cape Town, South Africa. Mm. We call him the grandfather of menopause. He is my mentor in menopause. He gave me all the information to help me to be one of the persons instrumental in in the Jamaica Menopause Society and also to launch the Osteoporosis Society. And he's a trailblazer in menopause research. Pop told me a long time ago that he said, Vernon, the first time I presented a paper on menopause at a medical conference, there were six people in the audience that genuinely wanted to hear what I had to say, and the rest came to laugh. Because menopause was always in the closet because it was associated with aging, and women just don't want you to know their age after a certain time. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, aging is associated with all sorts of things, you know, wrinkling of the skin, we're not feeling so beautiful anymore, and women can go into all sorts of depressive states because 
They used to be so beautiful and vibrant, and then now all of a sudden, all of these things are happening to you. Doc, so hold that you thought. Know? Hold that thought, Doc. I want to come back and have that conversation because we're going to come out of the closet. You understand, ladies? We're coming out of the closet right here on Every right. Woman because <laughs> we're all going to get there. And, you know, Doc, it's so funny. When my breast started sagging after, you know, breastfeeding my two children, I, it took a while for me to embrace that, you know. And because I am going to face menopause, I want to address it right now. And I want to ask you to help me prepare because I'm afraid. How old are you if you don't mind my asking? Doc, doc, doc. I'm not tell the people on radio. I'll tell you. Let me I speak my age proudly. Trust me. I am comfortable in my own skin. And that is what I'm trying to tell women. We yes. are all, all right. powerful. Yes. And we should embrace ourselves mm -hmm. no matter what shape we are. You know, yeah. you must love yourself. Yeah, I think and that's this it. This is, is this is what I, I need do. counseling for. You know, and this is what I'm saying, right. Doc. I couldn't. I I when the breasts. You know, you know when those young perky breasts, like you know, early thirties, late twenties, and then right. you have the two yes. kids, right? And then you hit yes. the four zero, and you look in the mirror, and you look, <laughs> and you say, "Oh my God, what's happening?" So I, what? yeah. I went to a conference in Japan, an international conference on menopause, and yes. a Japanese doctor. She said, 40 is the old age of youth, but it is now the youth of old age. Hey. So 40 is still very young. Hey. So no. when the average age of women, we have longevity on our side. We're going to be centenarians in oh. this century. Mm. And when you get to 80, you know, that's still not old. So we have redefined what old is. So age is just a number. It's I just a matter of you taking care of yourself, and no matter what decade you're in, no matter what age you're in, you're at, we, are, we always remain young at heart. Amen to that, Axe. Dr. Verna, when we come back on the break, we're talking menopause, relationships, sexuality, right here on Every Woman with me, Empress Golding. Stick and stay, my people. It's going to be a good one. And remember, call, drop your comments. We promise to ask Dr. Verna. I am Every Woman, and I am embracing my womanhood and i want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in today is a relationship tuesday and we're going to start with the relationship with self and then we move to the relationship with our partner and how we are managing and the best way to manage together that menopause we're coming out the closet it's no longer a taboo we're talking menopause with our dr verna brooks mckenzie health consultant certified menopause expert founder and ceo of oxdrverna.com Doc, I have a WhatsApp coming in from my distinguished listener. It reads, so many problems for women starts with men. Men opals, menstruation, men tall. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to comment. Doc, respond to my listener. Pardon me? Oh, you didn't hear it. I have a WhatsApp coming in from one of our listeners. No, I heard what you said. Oh. She wants me to comment on why all of these things start with men. The well, menopause, I th I, the menstruation. Yeah, I think she's making a joke, but I thought I would ask you to respond. I know, but, then, <laughs> but I'm going to answer the question. Yes, please. What did I say when I went to the menopause conference that Mrs. Metcalf um, sponsored me to attend? I saw a room full, full of, of men. men talking about women. women. Hell, mm -hmm. what happened is that all the research in the past has been done on men, and they were not doing research on women. It is even said that the rats in the lab were male rats. Mm -mm. So it's the men who have come up with all of these names, I suppose. Men, but the men have their menopause, you know, it's called the andropause, because they also have incidents. But that's another topic for another day. Wow. I just wanted to say something yes. about during the transition period, when mm -hmm. the period has not stopped yet for 12 consecutive months, all you women in your 40s and even in your 50s, you can still get pregnant well. because you can shed that odd egg. And I had a patient when I told her that you're not in menopause, you're actually pregnant. She faced in my office. So if you don't want to get pregnant, you just continue to use, you know, birth control until, you're, you know, the period has stopped. Well, 
What you say? Hold on down. What you saying to me? I can get asking. pregnant. I can get pregnant at fifty. If I'm transitioning yes. it, okay. There no. are women who have their first child at fifty, okay. and there are some women whose menopause, their period don't. I had two patients in my office whose period stopped around fifty-nine, but that is not the norm. So they, I was just a little bit concerned, and then they said to me, "No, doc, I'm not concerned because my mom, her period stopped around that time." And you had asked about how do you know that you're in menopause. In terms of symptoms, as we said, yes. many people are familiar with the hot flashes where the room is very cold, it's winter, and you are sweating and you feel this heat coming on and you feel like you're burning up because the temperature regulated mechanism is found in a section of the brain called the hypothalamus mm -hmm. and the thermostat is not working so properly. So your core body temperature rises and then heat has to be dissipated through the skin and that's why all the brown skin people... You turn red, and uh, you can't hide it as well as those of us dark, with a darker hue. And then when you sweat now, that is how the heat is released from the body, and then the body cools down and it overcools, so you feel cold. So one minute you're hot, the next minute you're cold. And then when we're talking about relationships, I have had spouses that come to me, the husbands, the spouses, and they say, Dr. Brooks, we can't sleep in the same room with them because this minute they pull on the blanket and then they say they're cold and then they bring it off and they say they're hot. So we just sleep in another room. <laughs> so oh, men, oh. <laughs> it affects them as well. Mm -hmm. And what happens now, you don't sleep properly because you're getting a lot of sweating at night. And when you get up in the morning, you're tired, you get mood swings, and... Uh, what is most distressing to many of the patients that I saw is what we call cognitive decline. You can't remember things like you used to. Mm -mm. And one lady, she was an actress, and she said, Doctor, I'm an actress, and I cannot remember my life. So that would be very distressing for somebody like that. And this accountant, she can't remember the figures, and that you're talking, and in the middle of a sentence, you don't remember what you want to say. But... Fear not. Not everybody has no symptoms. There are some women who just breathe through and they have no symptoms at all. Good point so, there. Hold on, Doc. We're gonna go we're gonna go to the phone lines for Ox. Dr. Verna, hold on, hold that thought right. about symptoms and some women commenting here saying they don't get any symptoms at all. Hello, caller. Welcome to Ask Dr. Verna on a relationship Tuesday. Hello. Afternoon, Empress. This is Marjorie. I'm calling to find out. Yes. I'm not reach menopause stage as yet, because I'm just 42. Mm -hmm. And my husband is um, um, 41. Mm -hmm. So I have an idea about the um, menopause when it affects the ladies, eat and all of that, have art classes and all of that. Mm -hmm. So when my husband reaches st what stage, no, that no, say, he might go to andropause. Okay, let's hear from Doc. At what stage will Marjorie know that her husband is going through andropause, the men's version of menopause? Well, I don't know why they call it andropause because they don't pause at all. They don't have something like women where all periods stop to let us know that this is it. The men, because they have estrogen in their bodies as well, not as much as women, their main hormone is testosterone, the androgen, mm -hmm. and that is what gives them their muscle mass and their sexuality, their libido, and all of that. And what they notice is that they start to lose some muscle mass because, you know, when you age, then they start to put on a little weight around their belly. And uh, their sexual performance may not be as it used to be, and they also get cranky. And... The literature shows in some studies that men actually get hot flashes as well. So they get a variety of symptoms that you would not necessarily associate with menopause or andropause, but those are some of the symptoms that they get. So when you see them getting a little cross and cranky and all of that, then that could, and losing their muscle mass, they don't have that six pack as before then that could kind of like tune you in to realizing that, oh, they're also going to be underpulse. Mm. But it's not just us women. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks for calling, Marjorie. Okay. All right. We have another caller on a relationship. Tuesday, it's Every Woman with me, Empress Golding, and it's time for Ask Dr. Verna. Hello, caller. Good afternoon. Hi. Miss 
Miss Golden, why you do this when I'm going away? What? I have to stop. Anyhow. That's what, what, what did I do? Give you menopause? No. <laughs> the, 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 the precious topic. <laughs> Doctor, I would like to say to you, Miss, I'm not taking over your job, but when the man is entering into angiopause, they are miserable and them have less <laughs> semen. Anyhow, go over to me now. I, I start my period from I was 12. I start go to my menopause from I was 36. I never know. A lot of headaches. Sometimes slack parts. Sometimes tight parts when going to have sex. When I catch in my 45... I realized a lot of headache. Before 45, in the 30s, I used to have a lot of headache. But in the 45 now, a lot of headache. And the period is not flowing like first. When I catch the 50 now, and dash in at the 54, my God. Sometime a morning time when me wake up, when me look for my foot, me see dry skin like a lizard. And me not get no cut, and me never have no cut. And then start to have heat, wet something put around me neck, but poor Miss Jais no know how. Until now, me realize me would like to have sex, but as long as the penis enter there, not even go through, not even enter in the cup, just at the cup mouth. My belly button, I'm just, and then some of the time, long I would say to my husband, so me glad to me do it, yeah, man, and so on, and so on, and until now, he have that a week me with it, but he don't understand. Then afterward, now I start to find out, I having bad feeling, coming like I'm going to faint, but as a touching of the finger, so, and my way to doctor feel good. You see, by the time I come home, doctor. And two weeks, me take the medication. I go to every doctor in Amobie, even Upper Cornwall Regional. At one of the time, they said to me, say, I don't have pressure. So they don't know what's happening to me, because sometimes the pressure up, sometimes it don't. But any time the, the menopause, I push up himself now. I am a hypertension from 16. It push up the pressure. Mm. Oh, so, well, Miss Joyce, I'm going to have to leave it there, Doctor Miss Joyce. <laughs> my, my, my. You distinguished... have one other part, tight. I'm going to be in a lovely day and keep take care of. Yeah, I'm head. so glad that you were able to share, and we got to go there because there's a there's an issue of intimacy with our partners as women. Um, and I guess Doc, you can respond to our caller. Second and third time, you have two more time left. Good. Okay. <laughs> well. She gave a lot of information, taking us on this sojourn of her journey from premature menopause into the menopause state. But I noticed she said that when she got into her 40s, that the period was not flowing mm. as it used to. So it suggests to me that while her period stopped, she might have been having what I described as a primary ovarian insufficiency. Yes. And not menopause. Mm. Because once the period stops, that's it. That's it. And if it stops for 12 consecutive months and then it comes back, you should visit your gynecologist because they have to do tests to find out why you're bleeding. You understand? Yes. So maybe that's what might have happened to her. And then since she addressed a little bit of what sounded to me like some sort of sexual issues. Yes. Then, as the estrogen levels fall, and as we get, say, from 50s into 60s, then we now are getting most of the symptoms. When the hot flashes would be like fading away, although in some people it might last longer than 10 years, especially in black women and Hispanic women, mm. we use the vagina. It gets, the lining gets thin. And the vagina is actually a muscular pump. So if you don't use it, you may lose it. Hmm. So it can get shorter. It's folded up. You see, like an accordion when you open it out and then you can close it up. That's how the lining of the vagina is folded and it's called rooting. 
so that when you're having sex, the vagina actually lengthens. Now, when the lining gets thin, it can be bruised very easily. And the area, as she said, the mouth of the vagina, it can actually get smaller. And that can cause pain mm -hmm. um, on penetration. And uh, a lot of women, because sex becomes painful at this time and they get burning and itching in the vagina, they don't want to have sex. And some women actually lose their libido. Some don't. Some actually feel that they are in their second spring because they are not afraid that they are going to get pregnant anymore and they actually enjoy sex, having sexual intercourse better. We call that condition in the vagina. We used to call it vaginal atrophy, but that didn't sound so nice. Mm -hmm. So at a meeting of the North American Menopause Society, they asked us to vote on different names. And I actually voted on this name that they decided to go with, which is called the Genitary Urinary Syndrome of Menopause, GSN. So what that means mm -hmm. is that women with GSN, the sex becomes painful, as I said, and a lot of women feel embarrassed about talking about sexual problems. So when they come to see you, they are not going to mention that at all. So in taking our sexual history as gynecologists, we have to ask women about, you know, sexual relationships with their partners. And then the men, at this time, it requires patience and understanding mm. from the spouses. And I'm glad that you included the men on this call mm -hmm. because they need to understand what's going on with that lady so that they can be a little bit more empathetic. Mm. Women feel embarrassed. They don't want to talk about it, and then they tend to want to suffer in silence and try to avoid sex, and that can cause problems in the relationship. So at my menopause center in Jamaica, I usually ask the women to come with their spouse so that I can explain to him what's going on. And once the men have an understanding of what's going on with the women, then I think that the relationship, because this is not... Something that is gonna the, the problem with the GSM is that the only treatment that can cause the vaginal lining to get back to some sort of normalcy is estrogen, mm -hmm. and estrogen is used locally in the vagina, and that estrogen just a very minuscule amount that may get absorbed in the circulation, so we don't have to worry about it, and it is in the postmenopausal range, so it's not going to affect you at all to give you no breast cancer or anything like that because estrogen, by the way, does not cause breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, men used to ask me to come to talk at their churches. They said, Doctor, we want to know what's going on with our spouses because this very nice lady that I was married to, I just don't understand who she is. Mm -hmm. So when they get an understanding of what is happening, then that will help both the men and the women to have a better relationship so that they can age happily together. And do you see couples together before we take the break, Dr. Verna? Pardon me? Do you see couples together online? If they want to, to, to consult as a couple online, yes, I do. Oh, she because does. I had a, I had a, pay, well, not a patient, but I had um, someone who made an appointment to consult with me. She had a hysterectomy. And then she said that she noticed that sex had become painful. And when she logged on, and I do it through Zoom, mm -hmm. her spouse was there, her husband was there with her, so that when I was walking her through, based on the information that she was giving me, then he was able to understand the treatment option that I selected for both of them, that that was the thing that they needed to solve the issue that they had. And she, you know, contacted me again and she got me because it worked out very well for both of them. So it's sheer decision making. All right. Ask Dr. Verna. Boy, my girlfriend is texting in right now. She says to tell you as we take the break, this show is perfect today. Thank the doctor for me. She explained so much. So we're going to take a break. <laughs> and while we take a break, everybody, we're going to pray for our genitourinary syndrome. That, dear Lord, pray that I will not get the genitourinary. <laughs> yeah, the G, that's, thank you. Much better for my, my, for my lips, teeth, and, and tongue. And then, of course, we have <laughs> lubricants and vaginal moisturizers as well. Yeah. So for those women who don't want estrogen or they can't take it for whatever mm -hmm, reason, mm -hmm. then 
we can lessen the pain from mm-hmm. sex and we have all kinds of different treatment modalities now mm-hmm. that can help to solve that problem. All right, let's take a break. And if you all haven't repented from your sins, pray and repent it during the break so that God will look after you during menopause. We're going to talk about it when we come back. Ask AskDrVernon.com. Oh, my God. You know, my girlfriends and I were thinking about the changes in our vagina, in our vulva, and we need to have the conversation with our men. What are the symptoms of menopause? Why is it called menopause? <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking all of that. <laughs> so you can all rewind this video, which is on YouTube. It will stay on the Nationwide 90FM's YouTube channel, and you can watch it with your girlfriends. Share it with your girlfriends because we're all going to go through it. So let's deal with it right now. All right, Dr. Verna. Can I just mention something? Sure. It would be very nice of me if I'm talking about menopause and do not mention osteoporosis, brittle bone disease. When we are growing we need calcium in our bones to keep them strong Mm -hmm. but when we get to like about age 30 we are going to build all of the bone that we is going to last us for the rest of our life estrogen keeps the calcium in the bones and prevents us from getting osteoporosis but as the estrogen levels fall we are at risk for getting osteoporosis which is a silent disease you don't know what is happening until you present with a fracture but now we have a test that can be done which is a bone density test the DEXA scanning, which is recommended that every woman at age 65, 65 should get a baseline bone density test done because that can show whether the bone is thinning out or not. And then we have calculation tools online. The one that I use is called FRAX, where you put in the information of, about the bone density. You can put in risk factors for getting an osteoporotic fracture, and then it can predict in 10 years your risk of getting a fracture. And that will determine whether you need to be treated or not. So that is something that I think that all women should know. And mm. black women get osteoporosis. Mm-hmm. So don't think that it's a white person's disease, right. as some people have been telling me. Thank you so much for sharing that, Doc. This is the Every Woman Master Class on menopause and women's health. I love it. And our men are here because they need to understand what we're going through. We have a comment or questions actually coming in from one of our distinguished women listening. I'm going to read it for you. Good afternoon, Doc and Empress. Thanks for doing this program and getting this expert doctor to address our issues. Please ask Dr. Werner the following questions. What is the best thing to eat to have healthy nutrition during menopause? Let's start with that one, Doc. Okay, you should not only eat to have healthy nutrition in menopause, let me start by saying that, but you should have healthy eating as a lifestyle choice. So, menopause, when you're going through the menopause, you should pay particular attention to what you eat because when we age, we lose muscle mass, and that is called sarcopenia. When we lose muscle mass, then we get, we get, um, we can fall down easily because we are not as strong, and then that will increase our risk of breaking a bone. So to eat healthy, you select from the different food groups. So we, the body needs what we call your macronutrients, which are like your healthy carbs, your fats, and your protein. Mm-hmm. And then the body also needs micronutrients, which are your vitamins and your minerals, and we eat plant nutrients, and those are called phytonutrients. And we combine them in a ratio of 40% carbs, 30% fat, and 30% protein. Protein is called the first nutrient. It's the foundation of life. So try to select from the different food groups. They have plant-based proteins, and soy protein is a complete protein. The body makes amino acids. But there are nine of them. We need 20 of them to make a complete protein. But there are nine of them that the body cannot make. And that is the reason why we need to eat protein foods every single day to make a complete protein. So we can mix and match different sources. For example, rice will have a little bit of protein and peas will have some proteins. And that's why we combine the rice with the peas to get as complete a protein as possible. Mm -hmm. Soy... As far as I know, it's the only plant protein that has all 20 amino acids in there, and that's why a lot of soy is used in foods like shakes so that you, 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 it's very easy to make. So for women on the go and men on the go, if you want to have a healthy meal, 
then you can have your shake. And uh, it's just a matter of select, knowing what to select in terms of fat. We eat healthy fats that are more of your omega-3s because those are anti-inflammatory and omega-6. So foods like avocado and uh, cooking with like olive oil. And I understand that coconut oil has a lot of Health benefits, health benefits, health food benefits in there. And you know, you have a lot of coconut oil in Jamaica. We have lovely fruits and vegetables in Jamaica. And if you eat fiber, because in our bowel, we need these good bacteria that are called the probiotics. And then they feed on the fiber, which is called the prebiotic. So those bacteria actually interact with our immune system, with our DNA, and they also produce substances which are precursors to a hormone in the brain that is called serotonin, which mm -hmm. keeps us happy. Mm -hmm. So that is our natural antidepressant. Now, I have to say something about the glycemic index of food. And people have to understand that in order not to get things like diabetes, type 2, which increases in incidence when we age, then foods that are digested very slowly, such as proteins and fiber, those are the types of food that will help to give you a better control of your blood sugar and will help to give you a better control of the diabetes. So it's not just about just the glycemic index of the food per se. And Professor Boyne, Michael Boyne at the university, mm -hmm. was very good in sending me one of his research papers where he actually did a study in Jamaica on diabetes and looking at low to mid-glycemic index foods and fiber and found that those foods will help you to get a better control of your blood sugar, manage the diabetes better. It also is, will help you, again, getting heart disease by keeping your good cholesterol high and bringing the bad cholesterol low. And it has a whole lot of different health benefits. So get educated, understand what the body needs, and you just decide that you are going to make all these lifestyle changes to help you to age healthy with the minimum amount of disability. Thank you, Doc. And the same uh, listener says that she's been going through menopause from the age of 40 because she did a hysterectomy for fibroids. And final two questions. We don't have long, so I'm going to ask you to answer these as quickly as you can because there are other people weighing in. Is estrogen a necessary supplement for all women going through menopause? And what can we do to assist with the hot flashes and vaginal dryness? I know you, she mentioned, you did mention that already, um, Doc, some of the answers there, but you could probably repeat it for our listener in case you missed it. All right. So we are actually talking about menopause management. Now, a lot of women are afraid of taking estrogen because they harbor under the misconception that estrogen causes breast cancer. And let me tell you categorically, no. They did a study called the Women's Health Initiative Study, and they gave some of the women estrogen combined with the progesterone to protect the lining of the womb from building up too, too, too um, thick. And that will just mitigate the risk of getting breast um, endometrial cancer later down the road. But those women that just took estrogen alone, it actually, they actually found that it decreases their risk for getting breast cancer. Mm. And uh, estrogen therapy is FDA approved for the treatment of hot flashes, moderate to severe hot flashes. But if estrogen helps you to sleep better, it gives you a better quality of life. And like how oh, she has had a hysterectomy, she don't have to get any progesterone or worry about getting the lining of the womb too thick. And she don't have to worry about getting breast cancer because in that study, it's a woman like her that estrogen would be the appropriate treatment for her hot flashes. But let's say she can't take estrogen for whatever reason. And some of the contraindications are if you have had like a blood clot or at risk for getting a blood clot, like you have a DVT, pulmonary embolism, if you have had a stroke, heart disease, breast cancer, active liver disease, those women, we recommend that you don't take hormone therapy. But the important thing is to weigh the risk against the benefits and to see what is it that you want. And then we will help you to make an, as Dr. Bernal, we help you to make an informed decision as to what is the best treatment option for you. We also have what we call non-hormonal treatment where these products have no hormones in them, 
And some of those antidepressants that we use to treat depression mm. have been shown to be very effective in treating hot flashes. And paroxetine methylate at a dose of 7.5 milligrams has been FDA approved for the treatment of hot flashes. We also have gabapentin, marketed as durantin. That I found to be very effective in people who don't want to take the, the hormones. And we have like clonidine that was used that is used to treat high blood pressure. That that um, product also can help um, to treat hot flashes. Then we have what we call phytoestrogen, such as soy products with the isoflavones, things like red clover, black cohort, and we have a whole range of different things that people are using now to help them with their hot flashes. So there are several options that are available that if you don't want to take hormones and if you can't take it for whatever reason, then we can walk you through what are the options that are available for you. Now that I've left Jamaica, I am not quite sure what products they, they have there, but if you Consult with me on Ask Dr. Berla. I can find out what products are in Jamaica, and then I'll be able to help you to make an informed decision as to what is the best product for you. Because so that's what we do. We individualize the treatment mm. for every single woman. No two women necessarily get the same management. Excellent response there. We have a question coming in. Ask Dr. Verno on every woman today on a relationship Tuesday. Empress, I find now that menopause is setting in. I'm fi I find I'm gaining weight. Is that a common symptom, Doc? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. I mean, menopause is so wide. It will take the hours to talk about everything. But from the questions, I'm covering a wide range of different issues that women have. Mm -hmm. Now, in menopause, what we have as we age, we get what is called a redistribution of the fat. Now, listen to me very carefully. The fat is not supposed to be redistributed to your belly. It is supposed to be redistributed to your hip so that it will act as a natural cushion so that when you get older and you might get a little bit frail and you fall down, then you don't break your hip. So if you start to put on weight on your belly, that is not too good because that will put you at risk. That fat is not the good kind of fat. Mm. And at the diabetes conference that just ended a while ago, in a few days ago in Jamaica, there was a paper that was going to be presented on fat, the endocrine organ, but the speaker was not able to make it. And I was very disappointed because I really wanted to hear what they had to say about fat. So what you, we put on maybe like about a five pound, not too, 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 too much. So it's natural to gain a little weight, but not a lot of weight. And as I said, it's more about the redistribution of the fat in the body rather than putting on weight per se. But based on your diet and what you eat, then that will determine whether you put on weight or not and not menopause per se. Wow. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Now, Doc, it's about a relationship, and one of our women is asking... Um, why? Eight things. Let, let's, let's give her three or four. Um, I was going to say we could use this for our Every Woman Nugget book, like a list of eight things you should tell your partner about menopause. But let's do five things that every woman should tell their husband or partner about menopause. Oh, you're asking me to give you five things. Yeah, let's do five things in response to one of our, okay. our, our listeners asking what should she tell her husband. <laughs> How do, how do we break it down? Five <laughs> things that you must tell him about menopause. All right. You know, there was a patient of mine who actually asked me to come to her home to explain to her husband about menopause because, you know, he never understood what was happening to her. And I find a lot of men tend to brush it off. You know, one Jamaican lady, you know, we are very colorful in our language. And she said when she was at work, and she was having a severe hot flash, and she was fanning, and the fan was on her, and apparently nobody, the air, if she was on, nobody else was, was hot. And her boss said to her, I'm wrong with you. We're making a fan, fan for every minute. And she felt so embarrassed. So the first thing that you men have to understand is please do not embarrass the ladies if they are going through a rough patch with the hot flashes and uh, try to learn yourself as much about what happens to women when they are transitioning from their reproductive years into what I call their golden years. 
So once you get educated as to what happens, go to the meetings with them, go to the doctor with them, so that the doctor will give you a better explanation as to what is happening. You should learn about what happens with the heart flashes, and that it's not just in the woman's head, that she really and truly, depending on whether it's mild, moderate, or severe, one patient told me, Doctor, I felt as if somebody poured black pepper inside of me. Wow. Another lady who lived abroad said she went outside in the dead of winter and she felt like she could rip off her clothes. She felt like a hell fire was burning inside of her. And by the way, there's a movie called Hot Flash Havoc. And I'm also in that movie explaining what a hot flash is. It's a documentary. Oh. And it was on PBS television about two years ago. We, got, we, have to, three, we have to watch that one, Doc. Hot Flash Havoc. We're going to look that one up, people. Hot Flash Havoc. Yes. You can actually they, um, go on the website, and they, they live stream the movie on Vimeo. So you can you pay just a small amount, and then you can, see, you can see the movie. So the men have to understand about the changes that are going through the woman. Some women who tend to be depressed, menopause, when they are going through their, those changes, can actually exacerbate those depressive symptoms. So men should not just brush the woman aside and say, you know, be very, that, you know, they, they're not very, um, what's the word I'm trying to find now in a moment? Yes, they're not, they, they don't understand what the woman is going through. Right. So they should have a little bit more compassion and... Uh, they should walk and do exercises, do things together. And uh, a lot of women, they are not getting some sexual satisfaction. So, women, you have to learn to explain to your partner what gives you pleasure because sometimes they just don't know mm. because men are visual beings. So they can just get it up and get it down and they're fine. But women like to be courted, mm -hmm. and uh, that is how you have to explain to your partner what you need with the foreplay and all of that. And in terms of taking care of your health, I, can't, I don't know how, how many of the facts that I've gone, but in you trying to take care of your health and to get a healthier, happier lifestyle and to have healthy options for eating, you can also involve your husband as well so that the entire family can also have a healthy, active lifestyle. So you can walk together mm. or whatever exercise that you choose to do together. And you just remember that when you first met, what was it that attracted you about that nice lady? So if it's just the same person, just going through a little bit of challenges. And I always say to the men, just try to be the wind under their wings to just help them navigate through this journey. Oh, okay. I, I, that is perfect. Did we hit five? I, I lost count. I was just soaking it all up. I started <laughs> I writing, but I hit, I think I hit four. No, there's a lot there. Five. Be the wind beneath her wings. Beneath <laughs> their her wings. Yes. yes. Listen, I, Dr. Verno, another. And, this, and one, one more thing. Do things, do fun things. You know, yeah. if the woman, you, if you used to love to dance, go dancing, mm. you know. You know, that sort of thing. So do, try to do things together. The only challenge is some of us, when we're dancing during menopause, we're going to be sweating. So there's, it's so hard for us women. I mean, <laughs> I love... You're going to enjoy the dancing so much. You're not even going... There is something that is called mindfulness. Yes. Which helps to keep you in the present. Mm. And that is another me method of managing hot flashes. Mindfulness. Mindfulness. I am preparing. I am writing down everything so I can prepare. I'm going to go home and, and share with my husband. And, you know, Doc, millions of women are experiencing menopause across the world. It's somebody's mom, somebody's sister, somebody's boss, somebody's friend. And there are things that we need to discuss in the workplace now and menopause. You know, women who are still working and going through menopause and having to turn up at work, how can it how can we make the work environment more receptive for women who are going through that pause? Well, education is the key. Mm. So a lot of people are now focused on health and they 
ask different speakers to come in and talk about different aspects of health. So menopausal health is a topic that they could invite a speaker to come and talk to everybody about. Mm -hmm. That's a very good idea. Encouraging all my boss women listening right now to bring in Dr. Verna. We can do it now via Zoom. Yeah. And, um, you know, book her for your conversation about menopause in the workplace so that we can inform the men and the women and make the space more convenient and conducive for women who are going through menopause. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I used to do a lot of that when I was in Jamaica. Even the hotels were mm -hmm. calling me to come and talk to the, the, you know, their workforce on menopause and different churches. Yeah. And a lot of people were getting, you know, a, an awareness that menopause was now out of the closet. And it's not something that women should be ashamed of and to hide. And then when men got a better understanding of why the woman is behaving like that, then you actually have a better work environment. Excellent advice there today. Let's sum it up now, Doc. Um, quick five tips. You know, everybody's talking about the dry vagina during menopause so we can eat healthy, boost our estrogen. And did you say earlier we can actually inject the estrogen or estrogen into our vagina if we're going through the no, GSN? No, no. It's, when we have um, creams, we have rings. One is called E-string, and somebody asked me, I've heard of G-string, but not E-string. <laughs> so we have tablets, we have, we have creams yeah. that we can put in the vagina. There's no injection into the vagina. Okay. All right. I just wanted to get it right, because somebody asked me, do you inject no, no, it? <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. No, listen. You, you have it in a, you can put it through an applicator mm -hmm. if it's a cream. Yeah. And then you just lie down and you put it, you know, push on the plunger and it gets the medication up into the vagina. Final question for you, Doc. Maxine on YouTube is saying, did our, or asking, did our grandmother take these things? Talking about the medication and the different pills. I mean, what was it like then for them? Were they as aware? Were they eating better? Did they go through easier menopause than many of our women are facing today? Well... Menopause, as long as, you know, because women are living longer, that is how we recognize that women actually are going through menopause. Because long, long ago, women did not live to see menopause because they were dying relatively young. Mm -hmm. And then as, as medical technology and medicine improved, then women lived longer. And uh, they, in the past, the lifestyle was totally different from now. We never had as many motor cars, so people used to walk more. The transportation probably was a donkey in the days when my great-grandmother and my grandmother lived. And I remember my grandmother, she used to take a product called Lydia Pinka. Maybe some people might have heard of it. But it was a concoction of all kinds of different things that they put in there, maybe some type of estrogens and whatever, to help to mitigate the hot flashes and all of that. So estrogen has been around, like, for quite a long time. So women were taking estrogen therapy and there is a book that is written called Feminine Forever. And then because of different challenges that happened, the latest one being the WHI study, where women decided that they don't want this thing because of how the, the um, findings from the study was published, that now that they're seeing that a lot of those things were definitely not so, but you know, people don't report good news, they love to report bad news. Mm -hmm. So Lifestyle was different. We ate healthier. We moved more. We were more outdoor than indoor. So that's some of the reasons why women did not have as many of the symptoms that we are having now. But women had symptoms, but they just did not talk about it. Well, we're coming out of the closet, women, so today. Out of the closet now. And thanks to you, my Dr. Verna Brooks McKenzie, AskDrVerna.com. Com. My people, check her out. And she's also an actress in the Hot Flash Havoc, playing herself. <laughs> it is the most provocative and revealing documentary ever made about menopause. And you can see it on her website. 
Dr. Verna, on behalf of all of my distinguished women and men listening today, we thank you for being our Every Woman Health Consultant, Certified Menopause Expert, Founder and CEO of AskDrVerna.com. We celebrate you today as a Jamaican. You gave your time and you have uplifted and educated. And I'm going to go now and pray that I have an easy menopause. Otherwise, I will be going on to AskDrVerna.com in the next one, 10, 15, 15. About 15 years, I should hit menopause, and I'll be sure to come to you, my lady. I appreciate you. A relationship Tuesday. Now our husbands know what happens to us during menopause, and now we know how to have that conversation with them. Thanks to Dr. Berner. Have a great day, my lady. Thank New you York. so much. What a Thank woman. Thank you, my dear. Yes, you're <laughs> welcome.